So, some people had asked um, to know Hugger's story. So, no time like the present. Um, Dewey passed away September 22nd, 2018. And um, I had him for eight years. He was my shadow, as a friend called him. He was very much... Um, he was my life, basically. And he allowed me to regain some freedom, some independence by accompanying me grocery shopping, going to church, um, helped me get back in shape somewhat, uh, round as a shape, you know what I say? Um, so, and he got sick and he had to be put down within three days. And I... I was blown away. I was just, you know. So, four days later, a friend brought a little dog over. And um, the deal was, if we didn't click, I was to give her back to her. I didn't, we didn't click. <laughs> it was like having two... We were at loggerheads all the time. And she, she was way too hyper, way too... You know, she came from a, a house filled with other dogs and cats and she comes here and she's an only child and my house is super quiet um even my father said like you don't even hear clocks ticking I don't have any clocks but you know what I mean like you you don't and I've been told before that my house is very peaceful it may be messy but it's peaceful there's no there's no noise there's no there's no crap there's you know anyway so she went back around the middle of December so from the middle of December to the beginning of April I was without a dog and it was uh, it was difficult it was uh, very difficult so in middle of March I started looking online I had been before but not seriously I just looking to see what was available at the local shelter and uh, because I had promised Dewey that I would save another life, I would adopt from a shelter or a rescue because Dewey was from a shelter. Maybe next time I'll get tell you guys Dewey's story. <laughs> um, so around the middle of March, I found this dog on the Niag Niagara Dog Rescue site. He had the biggest freaking tongue I had ever seen. And he looked big. And he, he, he was just all legs and tongue. Like he was just, you know, it was hilarious. And I, my heart was like him and his ears were, were pointed to the back. Like he didn't even look at like do went on that picture. So, um, I contacted Niagara dog rescue and, um, I put the process of adopting into motion and uh Phil that poor woman <laughs> I was so anxious and nervous and and concerned that it wouldn't it wouldn't happen and I didn't want to put my heart into something and, and be heartbroken again. But it did happen. So on April the sixth my friend Angelina and I drove down to Niagara Falls, Canada and uh it was it was a a 20 hour round trip we were supposed to actually sleep on the way back but we decided to come back <laughs> cuz we just did so i don't have a passport but she does so she crossed the border while i waited with some friends at the mall uh, in niagara falls and um for three very 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 long anxious hours we were out of contact because of roaming charges. Like we just, we wanted to be careful for, uh, of the roaming charges. So then I get a call and we were inside the mall shopping and I get a call. I'll be there very shortly. So out we went to the parking lot and I see her coming down the walk with this little puppy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so small. And I realized he looked like a baby do. And hugger. Stop it. So 
I had planned on calling Hugger Lovebug. It just, it was a name that was stuck to me. Um, and Angelina is a very, very wise woman, very kind, very wise. And I just love her. She's amazing. She said, let him tell you what his name is. And I said, okay. So I sat down on the ground and he came and he literally hugged into me, trying to melt into my arms. And I knew right then his name was Hugger. So we got him in the, in the car, no problem. And, uh, in the, in the crate in the car. And we started on our way back. We stopped at, uh, the PetSmart in Toronto, Mississauga or Toronto, whichever. And, um, he got his first toy and a whole bunch of treats. And like, I, I'm really bad for that because I will go hog wild. Uh, when I have a puppy, I just, you know, you can't spoil them enough. So the long, I think it was a 10 hour drive back where I live. Um, she did most of it. But at one point, um, we switched. I started driving when we got closer to home. Like I, I can't drive on the 401. I'll, I'll have a panic attack. <laughs> Even though I learned how to drive in Ottawa, it's like the 401 is five times worse than, than the Queensway. So we get home and um, we, we come into the house and I, I let him loose. And... Uh, First thing he does is he climbs on the bed <laughs> and lays down there. So we installed this crate uh, that he never used. Uh, I think he used it. I we used it once. So we installed the crate, and um, he, <laughs> he uh, stop. That night he slept with me, and um, I just he went to he slept actually. I found him sleeping on his back like uh like a little baby i mean he was just so tired because what niagara dog rescue they are partnered with puppy mutts rescue in the united states and i believe puppy mutts rescue is in georgia and um sorry i'm gonna try and change the focus here there we go and um what they do is they pull dogs from shelters um Hugger's mom was pregnant when they pulled her. So they pull the dogs that are from high kill shelters and they find them homes. And Hugger came to Can uh, to Niagara Falls with his brother and sister. So these, peop these people are amazing. They What happens is they go, they have volunteers that will drive an hour, a slice of one hour to bring them up to Niagara Falls. And, um, then they just, the, pa the parents just go and meet their pups, their new pups. So, like, they do a lot of work. They do a lot of, it's a lot of logistics. Um, you know, a lot of times there's a lot more than just three dogs that they're, hyper keys here. There's more than three dogs that, uh, in the, in the cars and whatnot. So, these people are just amazing. And I've been telling anyone and everyone who asked me where I got them, you know, go through a rescue. That rescue in particular, it was an amazing experience. Because um, I had conferred with other rescues before. And I was denied because I'm on disability. So because I'm on disability, I can't afford a dog. I can't... Um, anyway, it's negative stuff and it's like whatever you know uh, it, it's whatever so the next day <laughs> it was we had we had a list of things not to do with the new dogs and I unfortunately I'm I wanted him to meet everyone and everybody wanted to meet him and they all thought it was due but a skinny version of due and he met all my neighbors the first day, which was great because then he knew that these guys, stop it, please. They knew that the, this guy, these people, he knew that these people belonged where we lived. And then I tried to get him in the car. Couldn't get him in the car. 
I put the crate. I put a crate in the car. Couldn't get him in the car. He was terrified. He was he was shaking like a leaf. I finally lifted him lifted him up, and I have uh, waterproof back seat covers, thankfully, and a uh, a waterproof uh, cargo cover. <laughs> he peed and pooped in fear of the car, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I need this guy to be my next service dog. I need like." Um, he needs to be car safe, you know? So this went on for three weeks and I was getting frustrated. I tried everything. Treats, uh, praise, petting, games, throwing a ball in the car for him to go get it. He was great at everything ex except, <laughs> but, except getting in the car. So... Time comes to, I bring him to the vet um, so he can get checked. Stop. And um, my vet is on the Berry Down, Berry Down Animal Hospital. They're absolutely amazing people. So <laughs> I told my vet, I said, I can't get him in the car. He's terrified of the car. I mean, you know, he's he's he shakes like a leaf. And if I dare put him in the back, he's going to have an accident. And when you're going on a speedway, <laughs> he goes for poo. You can't just pull over, you know, to get the smell of death out of your car. So she's, she gave me some tips and whatnot. The next day, the very next day, I was going grocery shopping. See what I'm, I have to deal with? <laughs> so I, I had to stop. Hugger, no, leave, no, no, don't put your paws in it. <clears throat> I was going grocery shopping and I told him, I said, get in the car. And he gets in the car and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? Never had a problem since. However, <laughs> sorry, he's, 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 he's just, yeah, he, he will, he does not ride in the back. He rides shotgun in the front with me and he's got a, one of those, um, uh, leash clips that le uh, it it's clips into this uh, the buckle seat belt buckle and I make those and it goes on his collar so that he cannot jump out or go through the windshield if there's an accident. So I've tried putting him in the back and it just doesn't work. He's he's terrified. So I'm like you know what I'm gonna do what works for him. <laughs> so when I give a ride to friends, they have to sit in the back and it's I'm not trying to be rude but if he's in the car they gotta sit in the back so now he's he has a full clean bill of health um he's gonna be he was one years old on september i think it's ninth but on april 6th it's gonna be a year since i've adopted him and my fear was that I would be spending my birthday alone. Um, and my dad paid the adoption fee um, for my birthday. So when my birthday came around, the 22nd of April, I had my little puppy to uh, entertain me. Would you stop? And let me tell you, he 